Hello, Magna Man 2010 back again. Today I thought I'd talk a little bit more about my little levitation device here, which I really can't call mine because I do I did a replica of somebody else's. Uh, first of all, I take no credit at all. Uh, let me get this on flower here quick. I take no credit at all for this circuit. Uh, the way this thing seems to go is Adam Bus 77 came out with this. I don't know if he did a replication on it or not, but Litmore did a replication of his lit motor and uh, Smart Creations 2010 did a replication of lit motors and then I did a replication of Smart Creations 2010. And uh, one thing about it though is everybody made some changes in it, you know. Quite, quite some of the changes are pretty drastic even. On mine, the changes are very, uh, very not not very much at all. Uh, what I'm doing here, instead of using 5 volts, I'm using uh, 6 volts right here. And uh, instead of using this uh, infrared LED here, I'm just using a blue uh, LED. I had a white one in there and it worked fine too. Right now I have a blue one in there. And on the infrared uh, photo receiver, I'm using these right here. Uh, I, I got them online, and you can see ten of them for a buck and a half. Plus, I think it was about three dollars shipping. But still, very very cheap, and they work real good. And uh, what well, another thing that I've changed? I'm using the 3906, the PMP, which is a Radio Shack thing, and uh, the the NPN. I'm using the 2N3904, another Radio Shack thing. They work real good. No problem at all. On the coil here, I mean, some of them use as much as 700 turns and they use different things. But anyway, I'm just using a small solenoid coil for that. And it works quite well. Uh, here, here's one here, a small one that I had, on, I had it on there. And it worked too. The one I'm using right now you see them there, it's a little bit bigger and it works quite well on my little hula dancer there <laughs> and, and anyway uh, on top there I'm using a microwave magnet to give me the boost I need to pick it up and there's my little uh, blue LED and the re photo receiver it's right there, it works really good over here you can see the circuit is kind of messy with all the little alligator clips running to it, but it does its job. And one thing that, that might help you if you're going to build one of these is this lit motor to, uh, told me that I really needed to know that my uh, LED and my receiver were working. And what I did then is I just took and uh, hooked up a meter here. You see it says 2.6 volts. It bounces around a little bit. And it simply goes across this coil. In other words, it would go across uh, these two leads here, the meter, with well, the meter set at uh, 20 volts. And anyway, then you can tell instantly if you break that beam, the voltage goes away. If I don't have the uh, little hula dancer in there, the voltage will read just about six volts the way I have it set up. What I did on mine. Is I have over here, if you can see it, the, the little voltage regulator that comes off my polar, uh, solar power backup system, and I have it set for six volts, and I can adjust it so when there's nothing in that beam there, uh, it'll, it'll be right at six volts. And then when you go to put her in the, in the beam, you can look at the meter, and it'll say six volts. And as soon as you start to break the beam, it'll start dropping. And when you get it right around right around two two and a half volts, she should stay there. If you have everything right, <laughs> and that's another story. Having everything right, obviously the distance the uh, coil, the electronic magnet is from the magnets on her head there, is is kind of critical. And the amount of magnets is critical, and the weight is critical. So, on this one here, the way I have it set up, I've got two little flat magnets there, and then two bigger ones, and a little piece of uh, double back tape is holding it there. By the way. And on her feet down here, there's a little magnet down there in that the yellow thing sticking down. I have a real small magnet stuck to it to get the weight just right, so she'll stay there. 
uh, where she came from. Here she is here. Uh, <laughs> dollar, the dollar store. I bought six of them. I wanted the parts out of them. I'll show you why. You see right here. That's the parts out, the electronic parts out of that. The little uh, solar panel here, and the circuit board itself, and there's a coil there. And this is what my goal is in building this levitation device is to get something like this going. This one here is running, it just has two magnets on the rotor there. I mean, it's just running off the room light. If I shine a flashlight on it, it takes off pretty fast. I just got it hanging on a needle there. The needle is uh, stuck to a little magnet I have on top of that little bolt there. And that'll just go forever, as long as the light's on. Even with the light off in this room, it'll get enough from the window here to run it. Over here you see, uh, I don't know how good you can see this, but this is a little pendulum. And up on the side here I have exactly the same mechanism, and it runs every time the sun comes up, it starts going all by itself. So I guess it was worth a buck to buy uh, five or six of these things just to have the parts to play with out of them. Now, for my little gal here, <laughs> if I give her uh, hands a little push, around she goes. Let me take this off a of flower for a second. And uh, again, there we go. See her better. She'll go for quite a long time. But I've tried to put my rotor on there, but it's just a little bit too unstable yet, and I haven't taken that bug out yet, too. Don't know what to do about that yet, but I'll, I'm going to keep working on it. I'll get that rotor going in there yet. I had it going in there, uh, hanging in there on a the magnet, and it uh, it worked for maybe a half a minute, and then it'll fall down. But I'll keep working on it until I get it. Pretty neat, anyway, I think. Some, you know, some, the one idea that I can give you that's a really good idea is to uh, put that meter in line with your uh, coil. That way you can tell what's going on with the unit and uh, it's real nice if you can adjust the voltage coming in but I hooked it up to uh, one of these there's two 6 volt batteries here in series I hooked it up to one of these uh, batteries a 6 volt and it worked fine so a 6 volt battery will work just, just as good as anything this uh, little guy here by the way you all seen me on my little bread box <laughs> uh, sandwich box light here I, on my last video or the one before. I ran it off of this battery here, but I had it uh, cranked up the pot all the way so it was on full brightness and it ran for 17 hours. Now I'm going to try it, uh, I'll hook it up here once quick. Uh, I'm going to try it uh, on the lower power and uh, see how long it'll run. Probably, probably run, let me turn this down one. See what I'm doing? There, there. It's all the way down now. You can see it's still very bright. I'll do that test and I'll let you know how it comes out. Anyway, this was a fun project. I'm not done with it yet. I'm having a lot of fun doing a lot of experimenting with it, hanging up different things on it. I had a number of different things hanging on there. And it's a, the big trick to it is knowing that you, your, your uh, emitter and receiver are working and actually being able to see them work with this meter right here. I'll take her down once and you can see the meter goes up to about 6.08 volts and here she is <laughs> put her back up there if I can there Oop. there she is be real easy to hang up there I thought it might be kind of hard but it really isn't alright still having lots of fun I sure hope you are too thanks much for watching